Cumple tus objetivos con el inglés. Un año de inglés con el apoyo de los mejores tutores online. Apúntate en curso de inglés online tve.com y por menos de un euro al día. Hello again and welcome to a new class. Okay, they'll go. They'll go. They'll go to the concert. Irán al concierto. Eso sí. They will. A contra la contracción o hacemos aquí la contracción. They'll. They'll go to the concert. Concert. No concert, por favor. They'll go to the concert si hay entradas suficientes o suficientes entradas. If there are. If there are. If there are enough tickets. Enough es bastantes o suficientes. Tickets. Siempre va delante de los sustantivos. En este caso, ticket, entradas o localidades es, una, es un sustantivo. If there are enough tickets, they'll go. Irán, eso sí. If there aren't, big problem. But if there are enough tickets, they'll go to the concert. They'll go, recordad, they'll, they'll, la contracción de they will. They'll go to, go to the concert, if there are. If there are, if there are enough tickets. Hola y bienvenidos a la clase 177. Ahora vamos a ver la frase. They'll go to the concert if there are enough tickets. Irán al concierto si hay suficientes entradas. Y ahora nos centraremos en la primera parte de la frase. They'll go to the concert. Contraemos siempre they will, they'll, muy bien, they'll go, saca la lengua, they'll go, excellent, they'll go to, donde, the concert, muy bien, no olvides el artículo, hay que decir the concert, they'll go to concert, no, they'll go to the concert, muy bien, entonces más ejemplos, they'll go to the jazz concert if they can, irán al concierto de jazz si pueden, Jazz concert. Hay muchos tipos de concert. What's your favorite type of concert? ¿Cuál es tu tipo de concierto preferido? Mine is maybe, hmm, rock. I like a rock concert. Me gusta el música rock, es verdad. Entonces, they'll go to the concert. No olvides el artículo, es muy, muy, muy importante. O sea, I mean, hay un concierto esta noche, ¿ok? And I'm not going to the concert. Yo no voy. Uh -huh. I want to go to the concert. Pero mis amigas las conozco. They'll go to the concert. Sí, como son, eh? They'll go to the concert without me, sin mí. Uh -huh. Seguro que Fifi y Pitu van. Uh -huh. They'll go to the concert. Y Fonsi y su novio nuevo, no sé, muy amiguitos, pero... <laughs> Seguro. They'll go to the concert, too. Uh, they'll go, okay? Es como... They will go, contraído, they'll go, they'll go, dilo tú. Eso sacando la lengua entre los dientes cuando dices they, they'll go. Very good. Ay, no sé, pues voy a hacer una lista con los que vayan al concierto. ¿eh? Porque seguro que ah, Soraya, la nueva y Javi van al concierto. ¿eh? They'll go to the concert, irán al concierto. They'll go to the concert without me. Can you believe that? Qué traicioneros, o sea, a lo mejor no, no, que sí, they'll go to the concert. Ahora miraremos la segunda parte de la frase que es if there are, si sí, con la if cambiamos la frase hasta un condicional, entonces they'll go to the concert, la primera oración tiene will, They'll, aunque está contraído y no se ve, they'll go to the concert if, y después de if, jamás podemos poner un will o would ni nada de eso. En este caso va a ser en presente porque es la primer, el primer condicional. Entonces, if there are, y no if there will be, eso es un error muy común y muy extendido. No, if there are, sí, hay, if there are. Vamos a ver más ejemplos. He'll go to the concert if his friends go, y no if his friends will go. Él va al concierto si van sus amigos. Entonces, we'll go to the exhibition, la palabra del día. Vamos a ir al, a, la, a la exposición, a la exposición si mis amigos van, if my friends go. So, exhibition, la palabra del día, ex. 
exhibition. Y la, el acento recae en la tercera parte. Exhibition. Muy bien, repítelo en casa. Oh, yeah. Mexico? Oh, cool. Yeah, I want to go. Oh, quiero ir. Yeah, I want to go to Mexico. Okay, great. I'll look on the internet. Oh, okay, great. Okay, bye. Hi, it's Mr. Strong, and say hello to these. We're seeing my sensitive side. Well, uh, Michelle invited me to Mexico. Me invitó a México. But I need to look. Tengo que mirar, consultar. I need to look to see if there are any gyms. Yeah, si hay gimnasios. I need to see if there are any gyms. Yeah, well, I, I need to, to work out every day. Tengo que hacer ejercicio todos los días. So I want to see if there are any gyms. Yeah. If there are. Si hay. Si hay. Si. Quiero ver si hay gimnasios. I want to see if there are any gyms. Do you know? Are there any gyms in Mexico? Are there weights? Yeah, because I want to know, quiero saber, I want to know if there are weights. And if there are weights, and if there are gyms, I'm going to Mexico. Ahora vamos a ver la última parte de la frase. Enough tickets, suficientes entradas. Y no decimos enough entrances, no, billete y entrada decimos tickets, tickets para el autobús, a bus ticket, tickets para el concierto, the concert tickets, tickets para el cine, sí, cinema tickets, aunque en español dices entradas, en inglés es siempre tickets, muy bien, entonces enough tickets y no tickets enough, el orden es importante, there aren't enough tickets, no hay suficientes entradas o billetes, y si quieres ir a la exhibición, como decimos en inglés o la exposición, muy bien, Exhibition. La última sílaba es como una sh, 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 shun. Exhibition. Muy bien. Y ahora vamos a ver toda la frase. They'll go to the concert. Con la primera oración, en el futuro. They'll go to the concert if, y jamás seguido de will, if there are, si hay, if there are enough tickets. Muy bien. Are there enough tickets? ¿Hay suficientes entradas? Sí hay. ¡Qué bien! ¡Vamos! Yo, 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 people. It's me, your favorite DJ, live for you. Are you coming to my show tonight? Are you coming? There are enough tickets at the moment, but be quick, se van a agotar. But, don't worry, at the moment there are enough tickets. Que sí hay. There are enough tickets to my show. ¿Ok? Say it with me. There are enough tickets to my show. DJ Live For You, aquí a pinchar, ¿qué quieres escuchar? They want to know if there are enough tickets for my show. Yes, there are enough tickets for my show, but be quick, se van a agotar. There are going to be so many people at my show. This is going to be amazing. DJ Live For You, What? Que no hay suficiente entradas. There aren't enough tickets. There aren't enough tickets. There aren't enough tickets to my show. Las entradas se han agotado. There aren't enough tickets to my show. Hey, espero que hayas comprado el tuyo, eh? Because there aren't enough tickets. Hello again, welcome back. Welcome to a new sentence. Listen, this is easy. I've been working for about three and a half years. What about you? I've been working for about three and a half years. What about you? I've been working. I've been working on the railroad all the live long. I've been working is llevo trabajando más o menos tres años y medio for about. O sea, esta, literalmente he estado trabajando acerca de tres años y medio. I've been working for about, for about. I've been working for about three and a half years. ¿Y tú? ¿Y tú qué? ¿Y en tu caso? What about you? What about, what about, what about, what about, what about you? Para decir, ¿y tú? 
¿Cuál es tu caso? And what about you? I've been working. Siempre usamos el presente perfecto en inglés, continuo en este caso, para cosas que llevamos tiempo haciendo, desde un punto de partida hasta hoy, inclusive, y sigue vigente. I've been working. O sea, llevo trabajando tres años y medio, más o menos. I've been working for about three and a half years. <música> Hola, bienvenidos a la clase número 177. Y la frase de hoy es... I've been working for about three and a half years. What about you? En español, llevo trabajando aproximadamente tres años y medio. ¿Y tú? Vamos con la primera parte. I've been working. Llevo trabajando. Bien, pues esta estructura, have been, más verbo en gerundio, se llama el present perfect continuous y describe una acción que empezó en el pasado, sigue hasta el presente y probablemente continuará al futuro. Entonces, nos preocupa si sigue válida la acción o no, si sigue continuando, ¿de acuerdo? Entonces, con verbos progresivos o action verbs en inglés se usa en gerundio. Por ejemplo, I've been reading this book for a while. Llevo leyendo este libro desde hace un tiempo. He's been making an effort since day one. Y aquí tenemos la palabra al día, el word of the day, day one, el primer día. Muy bien, nos vemos en un minuto. Hi, welcome to the shop that sells everything you need, when you need it, wherever you need it. I've been working all day and I'm really tired. I've been working all day. I've been thinking about food all day because I haven't eaten lunch. I haven't had time to eat. I've been working for 10 hours straight. 10 hours without stopping I've been working today. I'm really tired, but I need to work. I need to sell, sell, sell. I mean, I've been selling all my life. What have I been doing all my life? Exactly. I've been selling all my life. And today I've been working all day. What have you been doing all day? Have you been working all day? Or have you been relaxing? Oh, that's right. You've been studying all day. Well, I've been working all day. So I think I can take a small break. Oh, there's a customer. Ah, I hope he hasn't been waiting for long. Have you been waiting for long? Bien, vamos con la segunda parte de la frase de hoy, que es for about, que en español se traduciría como durante aproximadamente. Ahora, con el present perfect continuous se suelen usar dos opciones, for o since. En este caso estamos usando for, que indica la duración de la acción hasta ahora, hasta este mismo momento. For about ya más aproximadamente. Por ejemplo, I've been teaching you for about 60 classes. Os llevo dando clase durante 60 clases más o menos o aproximadamente. I've been talking for about a minute. Llevo hablando aproximadamente un minuto. You've been watching this show for about four months. Por ejemplo, I've been sitting here for about a minute. Muy bien hecho. Nos vemos en la siguiente parte. Oh, hi. You know, people always ask me, Zach, how did you learn? Why are you so good at painting? Oh, practice makes perfect. You see, I've been painting for about three and a half years. It's not as long as some people, but I've been painting for about three and a half years and I've learned a lot in those three and a half years. Well, about three and a half years, not exactly. Now, I've been painting in a contemporary style for about two and a half years. That's right, we say for about, for about three and a half years, for about two and a half years. Now, I've been using this particular material and this exact style for about one year. Before that, I was using some different materials for about a year and a half. You see, I'm always experimenting, I'm always adapting, I'm always learning. Oof. It's almost lunchtime. I've been here painting for about three and a half hours. 
think it's time to take a break. Maybe I'll take a break of about, about an hour, no? Huh? Sure. <laughs> Bien, hemos llegado a la tercera parte de la frase de hoy, que es What about you? En español, ¿y tú? Qué cortito, ¿no? Pues en inglés tiene que ser un poco más largo. Porque para ser más correctos decimos What about you? Podrías decir and you, pero no es muy completo. Decimos What about you? Por ejemplo, What about you? O What about her? What about him? What about us? What about you and what about them? Ahora vamos a verlo en frases, en ejemplos. I've been sitting in this chair for one minute. What about you? Otro ejemplo. I've been teaching for over three years. What about Jimena? And what about Richard? What about David? Otro ejemplo más. She's been studying English every day. What about you? Muy bien hecho. Nos vemos en la siguiente clase. Hey, it's Frank, the security guard. And I'm at my post in the shopping center. What about you? ¿Y tú qué? What about you? Where are you? Are you in your living room? Are you in your house right now? Yeah. Well, me? I'm here. I'm working. Keeping an eye on things. That's what I do. I'm Frank, the security guard. Let me find out where my colleagues are. Yeah. McNulty, come in. Do you copy? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm over here in the, in the shopping center. Yeah. What about you? Oh, okay. All right, good, good. We'll, we'll, we'll stay at that post. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. What about you? What about you? ¿Y tú qué? I'm here. What about you? Yeah? I like speaking English. What about you? Do you like it? You should. Make it fun. Yeah. I like my job. I love my job. Oh, well, some days. What about you? Do you love your job? I hope so. Well, I'm gonna keep looking after the mall here, taking care of things. What about you? Hello and welcome to a new sentence, a new opportunity. This is an interesting sentence. If you pay me, si me pagas, por adelantado, escuchar. If you pay me in advance, o sea, in advance. If you pay me in advance, te daré un descuento. No te haré. En inglés damos descuentos, no hacemos descuentos como en castellano. Si me pagas por adelantado, te haré un descuento. If you pay me in advance, now, I'll give you a discount. Give you. I'll give. To give a discount. I'll give you a discount. Saldrá, te o te saldrá. Más barato, así. It'll work out. It'll work out. It will work out. Work out is resolver, pero también es salir. ¿Cómo sale la cosa? It'll work out. Cheaper for you. It'll work out cheaper for you. It'll, la contracción de it will, es como decir little, pequeño, pero sin la L al principio. It'll, it'll work out cheaper for you if you pay me in advance. Hello again, welcome back. It's good to see you back, eh? I, I'm enjoying this class immensely, and I hope you're enjoying it too. Okay, the sentence for today, yes. Uh, they'll pay me in advance. Well, if you pay me in advance, if you pay me in advance, I'll give you a discount. It'll work out cheaper for you. Yeah, será, al final será, te será más barato. If you pay me in advance, in advance, en advance. In advance is por adelantado. Si me pagas por adelantado, te haré un descuento. Eh? Al final será, te será más barato. If you pay me in advance, If you pay me in advance, it'll be cheaper for you. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you a discount. Te haré un descuento. If you pay me in advance, in advance, in advance, in advance, in advance. It's a very important expression. Pay me in advance. Pay me in advance. Págame por adelantado. Por anticipado decimos en inglés. In, in avance, literalmente. If you pay me in advance. Normally, I prefer to pay in advance because I like to get a discount. 
it always works out cheaper for me. And if you pay me in advance, in advance, if you pay me in advance, I'll give you a discount. Hey, how's it going? Well, uh, we're, we're doing okay now. Yeah, well, financially, the hotel is doing very, very well because the customers are paying in advance. Yeah, usually it takes them a month or two months to pay their bill, la factura, or their invoice, or their bill, right? Factura. It takes them, tardan dos meses. But lately, ultimamente, the guests are paying in advance. This is great because we have money. Wow! Now, me, I work on tips. Propinas. That's right, I work on tips, so I always get paid in advance. <laughs> That's right, in advance. Por adelantado. Everybody likes to get paid in advance, right? Yeah, in advance. Aprende todo junto. In advance. Casi como una palabra. I like to get paid in advance. Before the project. Before you check in. Yeah. Then when you leave, you can just go. Yeah. Do you like to get paid in advance? Of course. Everybody likes to get paid in advance. <laughs> but me, well, I don't get paid in advance. I, I take tips. So uh, if you're happy with the service, you can just leave a little coin here in my hand for me in advance. Hello again. All right. Part two. Are you ready for the sentence? If you pay me in advance, PC por adentro me pagas, eh? If you pay me in advance, I'll give you a discount. It'll work out cheaper for you that way. I'll give you. In English, los descuentos se dan, no se hacen. Todavía hoy en día, después de casi, casi 40 años de país, todavía es uno de mis pocos errores grandes gramaticales. Siempre digo, me, ¿qué, qué, ¿qué descuento me vas a dar? Claro, porque en inglés, to give. ¿Eh? Pero aquí se hacen descuentos, no se dan. I don't know why. I prefer the English. It's, it's more logical. Yes, if you pay me in advance, I'll give you a discount. Discount. I'll give you a discount. Okay, the word of the day. Otra vez un verbo compuesto. To clear up. Clear is claro, transparente. Pero to clear up is hacer transparente en el sentido figurado de aclarar o clarificar un asunto. ¿Me puedes aclarar este punto? No lo entiendo. Can you clear up this point for me? Can you clear it up for me? ¿Me lo puedes aclarar? ¿Me lo, me lo, me lo puedes clarificar? Can you clear up this point for me? Can you clear it up for me? Well, everyone, do I have a special surprise for you? I am so excited about next week because I'll be giving classes the knitting classes. Knitting classes. Oh, we're going to learn how to knit hats, how to knit gloves, how to knit scarves, how to knit jumpers. Oh, I am so excited. Now, the classes are 50 euros for one hour, but I'll give you a discount. Mm -hmm. If you ask me, I'll give you a discount. Repeat with me. Felicity will give me a discount. <laughs> Perfect. Repeat. Felicity will give me a 5% discount. Perfect. Okay, so if you ask me today, I'll give you a 20% discount. A <laughs> 20% discount. 50 euros an hour, 20% discount. It's only, it's very cheap. <laughs> so if you ask me tomorrow, I'll give you a 10% discount. A 10% discount. And if you ask me the next day, I'll give you a 5% discount. Oh, so many discounts. This means everyone can come to the class and have fun, fun, fun. <laughs> Okay. Are you welcome? Are you welcome? You're welcome, yeah. Yes, you're welcome if you pay me in advance, yeah? If you pay me in advance, I'll give you a discount. It'll work out cheaper for you. It'll work out cheaper for you. It'll. Contraction to it will. Como decir little, pequeño sin la L al principio. It'll. It'll work out. Work out cheaper for you. O sea, te será más barato, eh? Pero después de hacer todos los cálculos, por eso digo work out. To work out es ir resolviendo, ir sacando, ir entendiendo, ir desentrañando. Es to work out. We can work it out es lo podemos resolver tú y yo, nuestros problemas sentimentales. We can work it out. Y si haces los cálculos, verás que pagando por anticipado o por adelantado, 
con el descuento que, que te haré, that I will give you, ya a tus números y verás. It'll work out, yeah? It'll be, podría ser, it'll be cheaper. Será más barato. También se puede decir, but it'll work out cheaper. Significa que al ver los números, verás que tengo razón. It'll work out, things will work out. It'll work out cheaper for you. There's almost none left already. For God's sake. I only bought it last week. And they told me that if I bought this size, it'd work out cheaper for me. Liars. They said that if I bought this size and I bought several of them, they would give me a discount and it would work out cheaper for me. Well, this isn't working out cheaper for me. Come on, say it with me. They said it'd work out cheaper for you, Margaret. Yes, they did. Liars. Well, this is not working out cheaper. Get carat yenin. I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. Six, five, two, three, two, one, four, five, eight. Hm. Yes, hello. Hello, yes, my name is Margaret. I'm calling from Hotel Harriet. And last week I bought a product from you and it's almost gone already. You said it would work out cheaper for me, but it's not. Oh, okay. Well, thank you very much. Hmm. They're going to send me 20 free bottles. This is working out cheaper for me after all. Cumple tus objetivos con el inglés. Un año de inglés con el apoyo de los mejores tutores online. Apúntate en curso de inglés online tv.com y por menos de un euro al día.